Greetings and salutations. Um, have to excuse me if I am a bit wincy today because kind of sore, but um, here to bring you part two of this uh, piston assembly tutorial. And today I'll be showing you how to model the uh, piston or piston head. And um, yeah, I'm Garth, and this is World by 3D Prints. <laughs> Okay, so back in Fusion, and today we're going to be building the piston or piston head, depending on who you talk to. Um, now, this is the design sketch that I I'm going to work off. Um, strange thing is, I happen to find this on the same page as the sketch that I used for the arm itself, but. The dimensions don't actually match up. Like if there were a few mil out, you could maybe sort of account for the tolerances, but this gap here in particular between the edge of this circle and the center line um, is actually only 18 mil, whereas to fit this part it needs to be 19. So I've just gone through and Done a bit of math and calculated um, the, the adjustments. So this bit was supposed to be 25 across here in the pink, um, where I'm just going to shorten it to 24 so that'll fit. And obviously the diameter of this hole where the pin will go through needs to match that of um, the actual hole in the arm itself so rather than 33.8 we're going to make that 33.6 um, we don't really have to make too many other adjustments besides that um, so yeah working that out I've figured that the overall body height is 85.4 so I'm going to show you um, a revolve method for creating this today and there may be other ways of doing it but um, given that there are a few dimensions missing from here which could be calculated uh, it's probably a little bit easier to do it this way so uh, now given that we're building this for an assembly um, the first thing we should do because we're making a new component is create a new component and that one's set as active and just to keep things tidy for the moment we'll hide the arm and we'll create a new sketch just on the front plane and we'll start with a central construction line anchored to the origin Let's make it there for now and as you saw from just before we might as well set this to the actual height which was 85.4 So now we've got that to work with. If we have a look at our sketch again, we'll see that the top diameter is 86. And since we're working off a revolve, we'll work from the center line. We'll go out. Escape, we hit D for dimension, and we can set that to 86 divided by 2. So that's half the width of what we need it to be. And then we 
we're just basically going to go right down to the bottom along there and we'll create this little profile bit and given that there's no dimensions up the top in this section here I'm just going to use a bit of artistic license and say that that's in line with the top of that angled bit there and we'll use that and the rest of the sketch to create our revolve profile and then work from there so, turn off construction and actually now that I've done that that one's also a construction so I'll turn that off so if we have a look here this little line is inset from the profile but there's no dimension there but we do have a diametrical dimension for that which is 78 so using some fusion wizardry we can create our line us 2.26 uh, 2.205 so from there we want to go up five millimeters up five. we don't actually know if that's five um, and there is a little horizontal bit which again doesn't have dimensions um, but we can exercise a bit of artistic license on that because it's not really all that important to the overall design for what we're doing and then we'll just take that oh, actually we want that to go straight up from there uh, have to figure out the height for that in a minute but for the moment I think we'll, if we look at that little horizontal outcrop there doesn't appear to be all that long compared to that one maybe let's just say half the length so we'll make it about one millimeter D for dimension just set it to one You'll notice the dimension on here this is 2 by 45 degree um, been way too long since I did graphic drawing so I can't actually remember if that means it's two millimeters that way but given the distance between there and there I'm gonna say it's two millimeters high at a 45 degree angle 
because um, compare that distance there to the five mils and it looks to be just less than half so that's what I'm going to use so to do that we'll grab our point there and our point there pull that out there and say two oh, and actually I forgot to set the dimensions on that one so we'll say that one's five that's better pulls that into place now for this vertical line If we look at the drawing here, given that there's a fillet there, there's no real exact point at which to line it up. So I'm just going to take a stab and say that the point would line up with this second point, or the bottom point of the second outcrop. So if we look over here, the bottom point of the second outcrop is 5.7, 4.3, Okay, so we'll just bring up our calculator. And 7.3 plus 4.3. Five point seven equals and we'll stick that in a memory and then we can say eighty five point four minus the seven mil from the bottom equals seventy eight point four minus the value from memory equals sixty one point one. Again, we could have got, done that with infusion, but um, sometimes it's just a bit quicker to do it that way. So 61.1. And if we look at our design again, it then angles up to the center line. So we can just do a straight line from there across to the center. And if we set our dimension from there to there, drag it out that way, it be 9.5. And that should be pretty much all we need for now, except that we'll add that fillet in, which is 6.4 degree radius. So we go to our sketch tools, because there is a separate fillet tool for sketches. We'll say fillet click on the corner there and say 6.4 and if we compare it to that it kind of looks roughly roughly right for what we want and we just need to join it back up to the top and there's our profile. So now if we stop the sketch, what we can do is grab our profile. And we'll just go into 3D view so we can see this a bit better. And we can go create, revolve. And we've got our profile selected. We want our axis to be our center construction line and everything else looks good we want a new body say okay 
And if we rotate underneath, you can see we've got a nice cavity there. So now if we go back to our front view, we need to add a few more little details in. Just get rid of that calculator. <coughs> so we'll add in these little cutouts, as it were. Um, and the rest we can do from the side profile. So we're basically going to use three squares to do those cutouts. So we can just grab our uh, create a sketch first. Make it on the front plane. And grab our rectangle tool. We'll just do three little rectangles like that to start. We could have done two because uh, I think they're actually they're all the same size. In that case I'll just do one. So we want 4.3 high and If we look at that, I'll we'll just use our calculator again. Of course, I'd need it after I close it. Always the way. So if we go 86 minus 76.6, get 9.4, and divide that by 2, 4.7. So we want our squares to be 4.3 high. select the entire boundary and we can go control C to copy control V to paste okay didn't remember that for some reason so just paste another one If we look at our drawing, we can see the top one is 7.3 from the top of the cylinder itself. So first of all, we'll just drag those over. Actually, I might do a move on that just to keep them on the grid. Actually it's not even on the grid so we'll do a point to point move. Selected that in the wrong order. Origin point here, target point there. And then we can switch back to our move tool and drag it down a little bit. And now we can set some dimensions. So we go D for dimension. Three 
screen, I think. Double check that. 7.3, yep. And then we've got our square and then a 5.7 gap between. All right, so that's pushed it down there. And it looks like we've got a little bit of an overlap happening here. So, find out that's the top square. That's the bottom one. Let's grab both of those bottom ones and we'll drag them down manually a little bit just to give us a bit of room to work with. Okay. And now we want to set the dimension between here. Here to be 5.7, and it's done it again. Drag that down a little bit out of the way, and D for dimension between there and there. Okay, so we've got our three little squares all properly dimensioned along there, so we can stop the sketch now. And just to make things easier, we'll hide the body, select all three profiles. We can unhide it and if we use our revolve tool again. Three profiles selected. Use our Z axis. We want it to go 360 degrees or one side and cut. Hit OK, and there we have it. So that's our little cutout grooves done. All right, so now we want to create our little hole that goes through it. So if we go to our side view and create sketch, make it on the front plane there and we'll use a center diameter circle just put it on the midline put that there and if we have a look at the dimensions of the hole itself We've got 35.6. So set the diameter. Diameter dimension to 35.6. And it also needs to be 55 mil between the center of it and the top. So grab our center point and top and set that to 55. Drags it up into position. Lovely. Let me hit stop sketch. <coughs> Select our profile. Say extrude. And Symmetric. Oops. Uh, might as well just use offset plane. I don't think there's an all option on that. So if we select the outside face, that'll just basically take it all the way through the object anyway. Uh, and we do want it to be a cut because it is going to be a hole. So we hit OK. And there 
as the whole for our pin. Now we just need to create the sort of inner tube bit. So this little outline bit around here. And we know that from that side to the center line, 23.4. So we can actually reuse the same sketch we did before. Right click on it. See. Grab our circle tool. Select the center line. Dimension tool 23.4 times 2 and stop sketch. Alright, so now we can select the outside profile and we can do an extrude on that. Probably a couple of different ways we could do this. We want it to start. Let's say offset plane. Now if we have a look at our drawing, we know that we want it to be 19 millimeters away from the center line, so we can actually use that as our offset distance, so we'll say 19, and as you can see it shifted it forward there, and as for the extent, we want it to go to the object, and we can just actually we'll probably select our outer face again. Except rather than a cut, we actually want it to be a join. That looks pretty good. So there you can see we've got our internal part. And you could repeat the process, but rather than doing a repeat, I'm just going to select mirror, and we want to mirror a feature, and the objects that we want to mirror is that last extrude not quite sure why that selected the entire outside part but we want our mirror plane to be the center and we'll say identical so now you can see We've got our central little shaft bit. So yeah, that's the uh, cutout nice and done. I'll just hide the sketch for now. And just to compare it with our sketch, um, if we do section analysis, Choose our face. Doesn't seem to let me select that outside face, so we'll choose the top one. And if we do that, we can rotate it 90 degrees. Whoops, Not too far. So rotate that 90 degrees and push it just back about there. And if we 
look at that compared to that sketch you can see it's pretty pretty spot on with the exception of missing this little cut out here which I'm guessing is probably for a rubber ring or something um, for the purposes of the, the assembly we don't really need that so I'm not going to worry about it but if you did want to go ahead and create that all you got to do is basically just do what we did for the cutout create a circle on the side profile and then just do a little extrude cut and um, yeah, the only other part that doesn't really match up is the fillet that's missing here but again for the purposes of this video it doesn't really matter all right well that about wraps it up for today um, thanks for watching and I uh, hope this has been useful to you and uh, yeah next time I'll be going over the uh, modeling of the crankshaft or at least part of it I'm not sure if I'll do the whole thing because uh, it's not really needed for uh, demonstrating an assembly but um, we'll see and uh, yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below and if you like what I do and want to support me there's also a link there where you can donate and yeah until next time have a good one see ya